In this episode we'll be looking at uh, Fosham Jaeger, paying particular attention to the, uh, the camouflage, which I'm going to be doing as a sort of splinter camel. Now the, the base colour for the splinter camel is Panzer Aces Light Mud, that's 315. This will take a couple of coats over that dark, um, dark brown undercoat. So let's get the first coat on now. Now normally I take great care to avoid uh, all the shadow areas when I'm putting the base colours on for the uniform but as this is going to be a, a disruptive pattern I don't have to worry too much. I can leave some shape on as a guide but generally I'm going to be painting over those shadow lines with the camel colour. Some tight areas in here. I'll bring the collar down. See if I can keep that on camera. And the other collar. Bring that around. Arms. Well, actually I'll do the back first as a, a little patch of uniform there. Then we're onto the arm. I can leave an indication of folds here, but I don't have to worry too much. I'm going to come back and paint into them directly with some shade colour once the camo colour is on. And then I'm having to try and come at these from funny angles to show you the brush strokes which might mean a bit tidying up later on. Other arm. Keep the brush nice and wet so the paint just flows off. If you feel it being sticky at all, the chances are you're not going to get a good result. Going to cut it in a bit more to that feature. And also remember to go over the top of features when you're painting the arms to avoid leaving excess shade. bit more on the back of the arm. And then we've got the helmet cover. Just paint that all over with the base colour. Because it's a light colour as I said I would put another coat on so keep it thin on the helmet cover especially. Mm. 
Normally I'd be painting these in a bit queue, so I'd move on to the next one. I'll be keeping working on this one, and because it's acrylic, it's drying pretty quick, so I can get another coat on. Just stick to the same order of painting. And here I'm just trying to get rid of any semi-opaque areas on the base colour. Finish coat on the helmet cover. Just carrying those folds into the the shoulder there. So I'm going to leave that to dry just for a minute before I put the camel colours on. So I'm going to paint the um, the trousers in. These are going to be effectively field grey, and this version of field grey I'm using has got Panzer Aces Dark Mud. That's three one six as the base colour, and I, I choose this colour because it has a nice earthy, dull, and um, green colour. Seems a bit strange that we're. So far I've been painting this guy in, in mud colours but and even the bottle doesn't restrict you to what use you put it to. If it's the right colour for the job, it's the colour to use. Now then, hopefully you can see me picking out the folds on the trouser there, leaving just enough shade. Don't want to be leaving too much. The shade is there for depth and contrast. You don't want it to be one of the main colours that's visible. And the other leg. You might see me holding the base with both hands when I'm doing this. Firm grip is with the left, but the right hand's also resting on the base to help tie everything together, keep it nice and steady. So that's the trousers, got the main colour on them. So let's go back to the camel. Now I'm going to start this with Panzer Aces Splinter Blotches 2. That's 347. And this is the colour they're actually intended for this purpose and I find it works quite well. It provides a nice contrast with the base colour and the green that I'm going to use. So. brush loaded up. Now you're painting thin lines here so I want to make sure the paint's going to be nice and responsive and just flow off the tip of the brush. So I'll start with the helmet cover. I just want to be painting some irregular lines at this point. You can vary the amount of pressure you're putting on the brush when you're in contact. With the, uh, the figure and that will give you different thicknesses. And then you can go in and add little blobs in. Try 
try and keep them angular if possible but this doesn't have to be extremely precise all we're doing is creating the impression of the splinter camo we're not actually trying to paint splinter camo on this tiny little 15 mil figure and a tiny little part off it whilst we're talking about it it's, it's all about creating the impressions and letting your the viewer's brain do the rest and then we're going to complete that over the rest of the the figure and this is where we're going to be going over shade lines which is unavoidable unless you really want to take forever but it's also not a big problem because we can go in and deal with that the tighter areas, you're almost just painting little blobs in. You can put a bit more detail into these larger areas. Just got to keep that paint nice and fluid. This little blob on the collar there. Bring something up the back around it, add on. And then don't forget the other side of the arm, the inside here, if I can get that on camera at all. And then as with the, the headgear, just try and bulk out a few bits with some angular shapes. And that is the brown. I always start with the brown as the main. Oh, get that wee guy in shot. Um, as the main colour. The green is more of an accent colour. And for the green, I found that the best with this combination of base colour and brown, uh, the the best green to use is German Uniform Model Colour Nine Two Zero. It it looks sufficiently green without um, being bright and it's a distinctive colour from the brown. Stands out well in the overall camo scheme. You don't have to take a great deal of care at this point, it's really just little complementary little splotches and blobs. same elsewhere on the figure. Now you, as, as I said before, you, you want to be keeping the brown as the main colour, otherwise if you put too much green on, you're going to end up with something that looks more green than anything, so be sparing, you can always add a little bit more later, if you feel that certain areas are looking a bit sparse. And the brush is a bit dry there, so I'll just freshen that right up. So just a few more lines and blobs. And that is, let's see if I can find the rest shot there. That's the colours for the camo down. So I'm going to go back to my German Camel Black Brown, that was the base colour. There are places where the shade has been obscured. So here you've got to make sure your brush is well prepared. The paint's nice and fluid. 
and let's go and put back that shape so there's a hem along here there's a pocket here so I'll catch the side and the bottom now this is very tight in here but there's also a hem so Take that in, a little cuff, and some fold, so I'll just make sure they're nice and strong, and the inside of the arm as well. With um, a small amount a small amount of paint on a small brush you'll be refreshing your brush on a regular basis if you don't you're going to be getting dry, pre uh, dry paint sticking to the brush and then sticking to the, uh, the surface of the figure You've always got to be aware of how that brush feels. And then on the helmet cover, I'm going to paint a line, going to shape the brush a bit better, it's a bit splayed on the end. I paint a line just to indicate where the strap would be that helps tie the uh, cover in place and then because it's a, a fabric cover it's got a seam across the top so that is the basic camo colours now I need to put a highlight colour to the trousers now. Oops, excuse me, for that I'm using model colour green grey which is 886. That's green grey, not grey green. So using the small brush again. Going to put this high, uh, highlight as much as possible right beside the darkest areas of shade. That will provide the strongest possible contrast. position this so it's nice and clear to the camera but it makes it hard for me to get around these angles you want a light touch here that's why the the brush needs to be nice and wet but not so much so that the paint's going to just flow everywhere so there you go there's the um excuse me the highlight on the trousers. Plenty of depth here. So the next thing I'm going to do is put a little coat of black on certain areas. Those areas that are going to be grey or the boots for instance which are actually just going to be black. The dark um, brown base colour, shade colour is going to look weird as a shade for grey. So, there's several areas I'll be doing this to, starting with the boots. These are basically going to be black with a highlight. 
of grey. Now, we've also got a few things in here. Let me see, I can see a lot of this is very close together, so we would put in just blocking quite a bit of black in here, but there's a cap on this water bottle. And there's this schmeiser. Just paint black all around there. Being careful not to go over any of the uniform detail we've already painted. Maybe to come around all of the feature you've painting. Move the figure around in your hand. There's also a tiny little bit of a, a, a knife blade there. I'm going to take this opportunity just to give that a little highlight. There's also a grenade tucked into his belt. So I'm going to paint that black. Excuse me, I'm going to maybe turn it out a shot just so I can get around the side. And then we've got the Panzernacker that he's, that he's brandishing here. I want to try and leave the central area with some dark brown. And then just carefully paint around. It won't hurt at this point if you get a bit of black on the surrounding areas because it's just a shade colour anyway, as long as it's not something which is completely overdone. I don't use black, as I have mentioned before, as the overall shape because it is a bit stark. There's only a few cases where I would. So, there we go, there is the black in place, just noticed a little bit, this is why it's important to move around a little bit under the butt end of the schmeiser and just cutting into the, the barrel a bit more there right oops, daisy everything's in reverse for me folks, I've got my camera set up if I seem to be wandering around aimlessly now whilst that's drying I've got a, a small couple of small areas I'm going to paint a sort of uh, tan kind of colour. Um, this is the bread bag and the ammunition, um, the MG ammunition uh, uh, sacks. So I'm going to use US Field Draft for this, that's Bellegio Model Colour 873. Now this is one of the few occasions where I will put three coats of paint, different coats of paint down. This colour is um, the main colour, which is Panzer Aces old wood uh, 310 it takes a couple of coats over a dark surface so I just take the opportunity to put that first coat on as an extra shade coat it's not a lot of it to see in here but generally speaking you can you can usually see more of the bread bag and then these ammo uh, pouches for the ammo clips there under and over that strap for the schmeiser you don't need to leave a lot or any dark shade between them because you're putting another shade colour on at this time so 
as that's drying, I'm going to go back to the grey areas. Now, the boots, um, if it's a metallic and the boots at this point, it's going to get a coat of uh, German grey model colour 995. Now, starting with the boots, they're only going to get a little highlight. Just going to be some small lines. Little blobs. Like on the end of the toes there. Just to help lift it a little bit out of the black and give it a bit of shape. The grenades. Got, gets a coat of grey, this blade here, it's a tiny bit, I'll get a coat of grey and I'll pick it up with the highlight to bring it out. I'm going to leave a little bit of black in when I'm painting the, the schmeiser. Needs a bit of shade to help give it the shape. And then just try and get a little bit in to that bottle uh, cap. Then on the barrel and then lastly this uh, bunch of grenades for the Panzermacher. So I'll be wanting to leave black in between each of the grenade heads. And don't forget to go over the top. Go. It's actually another little bit. Once you're painting a figure, you quite often see things that are not necessarily clear when you're undercoating and, and doing the prep work. But there's a cover for the spade here, and I typically paint that the same kind of tan colour as the bread bag. So I'm going to go back to that. the pile up a bit. So as I said before I'm going to be using Panzer Aces Old Wood that's 310. Just going to be using a small amount of this. I'm trying to leave some of the shade colouring that I put in as if the initial coat. And then catch this fabric colour that we just painted. And then it's ready for highlight. Before we do that, I shall highlight the metallic areas um, that we've just painted with the German grey and for that I'm going to use model colour London grey, that's 836. It's the colour that's uh, good for just popping out detail when it's used nice and sparingly. So I'm going to go back to my really thin brush. Not going to be putting any highlight on the boots. They've had all the highlight they're going to get. So let's start with the smallest areas first. That wee knife, just a wee touch on the end, just to draw the eye. A little bit on that uh, the cap, cap for the water bottle, and then on 
the outside features. of the schmizer just to give it the recognisable shape. There the brush is drying off. See how quickly that can happen. Maybe shape that a bit. a little bit around the ends there and on the front of the barrel catch that grenade in there and then we've got all these grenades to do so a little bit around the front then down the sides small soft line and that's the grey highlighted it's got a nice bit of depth a nice bit of Highlight colour just for it to pop the shapes basically, all the various little shapes bring them to the eye. So I'm now going to do some work with the brown. There's a few things that need to be painted brown here. So what I'm going to use for that for, as a base colour is model colour in German Camel Medium Brown, that's 826. Got a couple of different areas. Got some leather areas and some wooden areas. I'm going to take a fairly common approach to them all. So you've got one half of the water bottle visible. We have the handle to the Panzernauker. That, if I must remember, goes right the way through the centre. There is also the leather of oops, the holster. There's the handle from that grenade and the leather belt. And then we've got the handle of the spade. Now if there was any other sort of leather straps, I would paint them at that time. Um, I'll let that dry. I'm going to put the highlight on the, the various tan areas I've been painting. And I'm going to be using model colour 819 Iraqi Sand. We need a very small amount of this. So I'm just loading my brush as with the usual requirements for a highlight. This has got to go on nice and thin and in moderation. The highlight colour doesn't have to extend along the entire length of the item as you're highlighting. Just enough to brighten it and bring it out. Right, so that's that. Let's go back to the brown. I've got a couple of different highlight colours I can use for a real pop and a sort of leathery uh, worn edge, I use model colour orange brown, which is uh, 981. Now, 
as I said, I think this gives a nice worn leather look at this scale. And the fuckers on it's incredibly bright. In fact, what I'm going to do to begin with is put it down there. It's like a worn leather strap and it's a nice contrast, a nice standout contrast on that water bottle. And then a very careful highlight on the edge of the holster. And then for the wooden areas, I'm going to go back to Panzer Aces Old Wood. Once again, some very soft, careful lines. And I've actually missed an area in there. I'll go back to that, that little handle on the knife. We just put a little blob around there on the shaft of the handle. Whoops, on the handle of the Panzanaka. Around the head and then remembering That handle for that grenade and then the Pazanaka on this side a little highlight on that so I'm going back to my where is it now where's it gone the camel medium brown because I forgot about this handle in here. So this little blob, it's a tiny little um, feature but when that dries I shall highlight it with the orange brown and that will lift it out of the, the dark setting um, give it a bit of definition. Now the strap for his Schmeiser I'm going to paint that st starting with Panzer Aces Splinter Camo Base. I'm really looking for a bleached, worn fabric look. It's also something which is a different colour from the other colours used. So it stands out. And there, that's what you call a blunder, folks. So before it becomes permanent blunder, I'm going to wash what I can away, and then shall go in and cut in with some dark brown just to give the edge back. So, that one again, and that was down to just uh, the brush being too wet. Well, no, in fact, that was down to me just making a blunder, actually. <laughs> so, painting at funny angles can be very tricky. So, back over the top of that, and that will do until we're ready to highlight and then I mentioned that little handle on the knife I'm going to take a bit off the orange whoops excuse me off the orange brown just put a wee blob in there it's now got a bit of shape to it you can see there's something in there catches the eye your brain tells you it's a handle for the knife. Certainly if the knife was a lot bigger it would be more obvious. So I'm going to take as a highlight colour for that strap 
um, not going to use off white. Let me see one moment. see it now. Got it off to the side. Excuse me. Had all the colours set out and then promptly forgot where I put them. I'm going to be using deck tan. Model colour deck tan. Now once again small brush paint sufficiently wet and I'm going to just try and give it a very slight edge and that's it just gives a little bit of a little bit of pop it's it's not necessarily needed for something that small okay so we're now ready to move on to the uh, skin tones. So the base colour for skin is model colour German camo pale brown. I think that's 825 or it could be 826 to be honest. I would just stick with the name and see if you can find it from that as opposed to the number. So starting with the hands Just going to paint over these. I'm not going to try and leave any shade around the fingers. I might do so with the thumb to make sure it is distinguished from the rest. But generally speaking, you don't want to be leaving a lot of dark shade in between fingers on such a small feature as the um, as the hand. See a thumb there and then the rest of the hand underneath and on top. And if the face, how you paint the face will be determined to a large degree in how well it's been sculpted and cast. Now I'll try and keep myself straight to the figure but straight to the camera. I'm going to paint a nose, a chin and then the cheek. In this case he's got an ear that's visible. You can draw a line under that as well. So we're going to go to the other side. A little bit of the nose from that perspective, cheekbone, ear. I'll try and get my brush around. Now I've put left too much shade on this side, so I need to bring that closer in towards the eye. And that's the base colours for the skin, so I'm not attempting to over detail the face. It's basically nose, chin, mouth if it's visible. Cheekbones, ears if they're visible. And the highlight colour is model colour flat flesh, that's number 955. So the condition of the paint on the brush is very important at this point. You're going to be trying to paint fingers and noses, so it's got to flow, but then stick where you want it. So let's start with a thumb. And then I can see three fingers here, so that'll do me. That creates the impression of a hand. It doesn't need to be completely anatomically correct. I quite like 
quite often end up with what I call Simpson hands because they've only got a thumb and three fingers so I'll paint back of his hand and there's three fingers there's one that's maybe tucked right in under the head of the pans and knackers but I'm not going to bother about that that's just out of sight as far as I'm concerned and in the face I'm going to repeat the process so I'm going to have a nose just shake that brush a bit better uh, I'm going to have a chin cheekbone a little line there under the ear ear itself and then try and do the same here bit of a mess, that's unfortunate, just me try to get around the angles. So there you go, that's the skin on and that is basically the finished figure. So there you go, splinter camo, plain trousers and a fair little bit of equipment picked out and detailed lots of contrast and highlight to help give shape I mean the um, the field grey the trouser stands out against the camel you can still see the shape of the figure the arms and such like even with the camel being in place the uh, camel's supposed to break up shapes we as painters have got to put that back in but there you go 15mm flames of war Fausham Jäger.